welcome to uh, our AMA session. So today we have our guest speakers Andriana and Atika. So Andriana actually graduated, is still studying veterinary, veterinary medicine at RDSPS at the University of Edinburgh, while Atika has actually uh, graduated with a vet tech degree in the University of Queensland. So before we get into the questions, um, Andriana and Atika, do you want to uh, give a more in-depth introduction about yourself? Hey everyone, I'm Atika and I graduated from TP in 2015. I also graduated from the University of Queensland with my bachelor's in veterinary technology in 2016. Uh, a little bit about myself, I was also the mentor and supervisor for Andriana uh, during her time as a student at TP. So it's a great opportunity for both of us to actually uh, share with you guys today and answer all of your, of your questions. Andriana? Uh, hey, uh, I'm Andriana. Uh, I graduated from TP in 2018 and I'm currently, I finished year one and two of vet school and I'm currently going to year three in September, so I have three more years. And also I worked for one and a half years as a vet tech under Atika as well. Okay, so the questions we have for today, um, we're going to split them up into different categories. So first we'll go through uh, the more general questions like applications and finances, like this kind of stuff. Then after that, at the end, we'll go through um, the more in-depth questions specific to UQ and RDSVS. Okay. So the first general question we have is what do the schools look for in potential students? So I guess the current students want to know, do you have any tips for applying to international unis? and like what they should focus on um, improving the like pre-application process? I guess for UQ, they mostly looked at my achievements and experiences. I didn't have any interviews during my time <clears> with them. So the clinical experience would definitely be the most important in either vet tech or vet school. So I guess how you carry yourself and showcase yourself as a medical professional would also be important in the long run. So um, they also look into how you actually dressed for your occasions, like um, during your placements, because uh, I started uni in year three, therefore I start placements immediately. How you dress uh, also showcases um, your attire as a medical professional, and uh, it really shows how um, you, I guess, uh, look and present yourself as a student there. So any tips I would say would be to plan ahead uh, during your study there to ensure that you have sufficient funding during your time overseas. Um, set yourself a budget, um, like accommodation and lodging is very important. Um, a driving license is definitely useful for the placements too, because sometimes your placements are placed really out of the way and there's minimal accommodations and traffic. So make new friends, they're really important assets during your time of study in the uni as well. Andriana? Sorry. Um, for UK uni, you, you have to apply to the UCAS system. So um, when you get to it, you understand. But you need to put like a total of five schools in that system. And I think you pay like £100 for the application for all five schools. And um, I did this through an agent because it's a lot easier to settle everything like, from the start to the end. Uh, including your visa. So um, if anyone's interested, you can ask me later uh, about my agent because she's, she's really, really good. Um, but uh, the great requirement for poly students for Glasgow, actually it's not really for Glasgow, but for like all the UK schools, including Edinburgh, yet to be, have a DPA of more than 3.5 to be considered academically and to be called back for an interview. And also for UK universities, there's a mandatory requirement for you to complete a certain number of work placement hours with different species. I think it's like 20 hours, but with like different species, like horses, dogs, and um, small animals maybe, and you can mix it up. But you need to check with the website or email them again for the link to read the um, requirements because they might have changed because of COVID. I see. Okay. Then, it's because um, the universities are like overseas, so they might not have like the, their standard of some of the modules might be different from what they are in Singapore. So did any of you have to take um, entrance exams, for example, IELTS? Uh, for vet school, I'm pretty sure there's an IELTS requirement. 
but uh, it's just to ensure that you have a good command of English. For UQ, they had it as well, but I just had to showcase my O levels English results, and that was accepted. So, I guess probably to vet school application, it's more, um, it's more of a requirement than vet tech school because vet tech school, I guess, is not as strict. So, um. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I guess um, there's another university, Messi University, that also offers that tech. Uh, they do require their potential students to undergo a pre-selection phase, which IELTS requirement is needed, but uh, not for UQ. Yeah. yeah, you have to check with the uni because I think sometimes it changes every year. Because in my... Uh, um, oh, wait, no, no, no. Yeah, New Zealand, we need it. So Messi Uni, you need it. But for Glasgow, we didn't need an IL um, result for some reason. Um, but for Edinburgh, we needed an IL. But that's about it. You don't really need to take any other entrance exams. Yeah. So, Atika, you mentioned just now that UQ actually don't require interviews, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So for Andriana, you had to go through an interview. Yeah, so um, I went for the Glasgow and Edinburgh interview and they were both very different because um, for Glasgow, we had a two interviewers, one interviewee kind of um, uh, interview. So they kind of asked me questions about my portfolio that I brought and um, about my work experiences and everything. And uh, I think the most important tip <laughs> to take away from this if you were really going for an interview would be that um, they will ask you why you chose the uni so you have to go and search before your interview you have to go and search um, the motto or the vision of the school and also the course structure like how they teach and everything so that you can say that oh I'm choosing this school because um, the course structure kind of suits my study style and they like to hear that because they're very proud of their course structures and also um use your science com or career com lessons that you're going to get in year three because they're very, very helpful. And for Edinburgh, it was the MMI, which was the multiple mini interviews. This was kind of like the practical exams that we have in EP. So it's like stations and then you have a limited time. So they did a lot. They had eight stations, I think, and it was like completing tasks, calculations, work ethics, uh, human ethics, animal ethics, and then talking about your work experiences and data analysis. And for all of these, because it's quite hard, we had to do the calculations without a calculator and my maths is like horrible, but I still got in. So I think it's, they just really want to see you try like your best and how well you take instructions as well. So don't leave anything blank. Even if you don't know, just write something, try and work something out. I mean, yeah. If I can do the math, you can too. And um, some interview tips would be to prepare like a clear pocket folder of all your documents, like photocopy, and then maybe um, do three folders of those and then bring it to your interviews in case they want to keep it. So make sure it has your resume, your testimonies, your grades and everything and all the work experience that you've done. So since the both of you already had a vet tech diploma when you applied to uni, do you think that it benefited you in any way? Like for example, um, that were repeating modules in uni and in a TP, or like uh, because you had a vet tech diploma, then your years were decreased, something like that. So for me, I was exempted two years out of the three because of the modules that I completed in TP. <coughs> so they were recognized as credits for my a degree. So I only completed the final year as it consisted of subjects that were not uh, taught in TP during my time. So this includes like farm practicals as well as exotic animal handling. So I specifically chose subjects that were not exposed to me during my time in TP because during my curriculum TP didn't have the, the branching out. So I didn't have like the small animals, large animals and poor culture. I had to just go through everything. So I took subjects that were related to large animals and laboratory work during my time in UQ. Um, and so, yeah, um, I guess although I only went through one year of um, uni, it really is, is not that easy. Okay, um, one year, you, you're thrown in the year three of um, the, the curriculum and then you start on placements immediately and then uh, 
you don't really have time to actually go through what you've learned in DP. Um, you, have, you have to be prepared prior to your course of study um, before you even start uni. So you also need to take note that although it's just one year in UQ, if you fail any of the subjects during the time of your one year, you have to repeat the whole year. So that's let's just give and take two years of um, vet tech school if you actually didn't make it through the first round. So really, um, it's really crucial for you to do very well during that time. Uh, Atika, uh, mm -hmm. from what I remember, you worked at Mount Pleasant before you went to UQ, right? Uh, yes. So do you think that working there um, like, like made it easier in terms of studying in UQ because you already had like some prior knowledge before entering the uni? Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually worked at Mount Pleasant because I wanted to take a gap year, but my gap year turned out to be only nine months. So um, that job allowed me to really understand like what I really wanted, whether that tech was the line for me, whether I really wanted to work in this field for the next few years, whether I wanted to actually continue my study in this. So well, during my time at Mount Pleasant, um, I really put myself in situations such as uh, a stressful work environment, whether I can take that kind of environment and actually, you know, love my job while doing it. So uh, when I was in UQ, I used that uh, work experience that I had into my placements to actually do well in it because um, actually UQ does recognize students that have placements in Mount Pleasant. If you actually mention to them, they actually allow you to do more practical stuff like uh, IB Capital and all that because they know that you've already went through all those steps uh, prior to entering uni. So it's really great to actually have experience before entering uni because they really look into it. Yeah, they won't like, just forget that you had all these prior experiences. Mm, I see. Then what about you, Andriana? Like um, did um, I think yeah yeah sorry. <laughs> like like yes, did sorry. having yeah. a vet tech diploma like made it easier for you to enter veterinary medicine because I know it's it's like it's a very hard course you know. Yeah um, I think the stuff we learned in poly did help a bit because um, I could understand a bit better so it was like refreshed in my mind but it's quite superficial what we learn at poly, even though it does seem like it's a lot. Uh, no, uni is hard. <laughs> you have to, you, you need to relearn everything when you come to uni. You don't, um, it's not because you've done it or you've seen it before, you know, um, you, you're going to know it because they really go in depth. And you, like when I was doing it, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know there was another level to this when you only did that in poly. And yeah, uni is really hard, pal. <laughs> but, um, but it's good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just to add on the the depth of the subjects is really different. Yeah. A scale of one to ten, like comparing to comparing to what you learn in poly, how much more in depth is uh, <laughs> the stuff you learn in uni? Um, it's very very in depth, <laughs> but because you already have a background in it if you are willing to not be complacent and relearn it, you'll be very good at it. It'll be very easy for you to learn it because you know it already. But because you have that background there. But yeah, don't worry. I, I, I don't really remember stuff from Polly. Like I was trying to remember, oh my gosh, I did this in AAP. Where is the femur when I was doing anatomy? <laughs> so like, it will come back to you. You don't, don't be stressed about like me saying that like it helped and everything, but. Yeah, I mean, if you remember, you remember it means it's important. If you don't, then you just learn it again, you know, it's fine. Yeah, yeah I guess one such example is when I was learning parasitology during UQ. Um, it's not just about learning the medication. You need to know the components of the medication, what it works on, the pharmacokinetics of that medication, like what animal uh, it, it works on and different animals will have different side effects and you don't just learn cats and dogs, you learn about lizards, exotics, birds, everything, you know, and you have to remember everything. It's like my notes are this thick <laughs> and it's, it's really different in terms of that. So you really go in depth in, in that sense where you go into the minor, minor details, which you don't really learn in TP. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so we covered most of the general questions now. So let's talk about finances because I'm sure a lot of the current students are worried about that because overseas university they, have, they overseas university they have a reputation <coughs> of being very expensive. So how much they want to know how much do you spend like approximately on overseas university, including like travel fees, <laughs> um, school fees, uh, daily expenses. Okay, um, for me, during my time, UQ, the cost fee was 35k. I think now they actually increased it to 42 per year. Um, and for my food and accommodation, I budgeted about another 30k. So I meal prep most of the time, so I didn't spend much on food. Um, it was tight budget, I, I just couldn't. The food um, there is expensive, right? Uh, I would say, yeah, but the portion is huge. I mean, you can divide your meals in breakfast, lunch, dinner, it's really big. But that's because you eat so little though. Oh uh, yeah, that's true, yeah, I, I eat really People <laughs> like me, I eat two meals in one meal. <laughs> yeah, so like, winter time I eat a lot, so, and I stress eat a lot during my exam, so uh, I guess that's part of the budget as well. So I took a bus mostly, so because I didn't have a driving license, I didn't have to think about um, like petrol and all that. So that's about 100 a month or so. Yeah, because I always um, like hike on my uh, landlady or my housemate's car because I can. And I guess I prepared most of my things from Singapore. I prepped my scrubs and stethoscope, things that I actually need during my placements there. Uh, I actually bring it from home so that I don't buy it again. So I saved a lot on that component, yeah. I guess vet school it's much more expensive, so maybe Andrea can touch on that. <laughs> um, yes, the rumors you have heard is true. It is half a million. <laughs> it's about five hundred k for the entire thing. So, um, for a year, for my year per year at vet school in Edinburgh, it's about thirty five thousand pounds. So that's about seventy k thing if you're like you know. But okay, bigger picture. <laughs> Don't like it will pay off. Uh, not really, but it will pay off because it's like you know your dream. But okay, so anyway, rent in Edinburgh is quite high because the property uh, tax here is quite high. So um, you can get a place for um, four hundred to eight hundred pounds a month in um, groceries. Because I always meal prep. I don't really eat out a lot. I only eat out when there's like one-for-one one deals and you share with your friend, you know. <laughs> it's like half price. But my groceries cost me about £100 a month. Um, it's really not bad. It's quite doable. And, and so my groceries is £100 a month. My rent is about £430 a month. And then um, I used to get the bus pass because we go to school every day, but now I don't. Um, but if you do, then it's about £52 a month for the bus pass. But it's like unlimited rides everywhere. And yeah, travel fees. Uh, I think in Glasgow, the housing's a lot cheaper. So you can get a really nice house from like £350 onwards. But in Edinburgh, like £400, I'm, I'm living in the basement. But <laughs> it's a very good location, so I don't mind. Um, and then groceries are a bit cheaper in Glasgow as well, and the fees are also a bit cheaper in Glasgow. And um, yeah, and I think you don't need to take the bus at Glasgow; you can walk to that school because the campus is really near the main. Uni. Yeah, yeah, in Gatton, you, you can't walk to the campus. I mean, it's a ten-minute drive, but you go through like forest and all the different <laughs> types of vegetation. So I don't think you want to walk to school. But there's a bus um, from if you're living out of campus and I guess our campus is much more cheaper in terms of accommodation. It costs mm -hmm. about yeah, 180 yeah, yeah. Australian dollars to just live outside rather than in campus, although it's more convenient. But yeah, food wise, it's yeah. quite similar to Singapore. Oh, well, besides like um, like hitchhiking or uh, walking to school or like meal prepping. Uh, do you have any other tips to manage your finances? I, so I don't really, you know, splurge much. I, I really only spend on good food 
when I actually do well in my subjects or when I feel like having some sushi. Sushi is really expensive there, by the way. <laughs> and yeah, I just want to like spend some of some something different, I guess, if I eat the same food all the time. I just want to try some pasta, burger, then I'll spend more. But in terms of budgeting, I guess I just don't really go out so often. I don't know. I mean, I do visit the city. I do go to Brisbane and, you know, do my shopping there. Uh, but, you know, Australia has Target, Kmart, and all those cheap, good stuff. <laughs> I, I guess you probably enjoy um, spending a lot of money there. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't really spend much, so I can't really comment on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, way to manage your finances is don't use them. <laughs> don't spend unnecessarily. Um, don't go out partying. Like, don't give in to the like, the kids that go out and party and like they open tables at clubs and, and yeah. stuff. Don't do that because it's cheaper than here, but it's a waste of money. Like you could spend it on best good food. Like you could buy like a steak dinner, you know, from from Lidl, and you can cook it yourself. It's only like five pounds for two steaks. It's great. And eat more. Eat eat at home more often. Learn to cook. It's fine. Yeah, and just yeah. Try to bring stuff from Singapore. Yeah, I always call back home and say, hey, I need some groceries or some yeah. sambal or, you know, kaya yeah. for your my toes. <laughs> You'll get yeah. food from home, yeah. So speaking of that, did, did you feel like, do you feel very nervous to leave Singapore or like very sad? Like, was it very difficult to transition from being like in Singapore to being independent in terms of like studying and like men- like your mentality also I think you have to be more independent because you're away from family and all. To be honest, I was quite excited actually because when I was in, I mean, I'm in Singapore, I enjoy time alone. I enjoy, um, you know, living on my own. So going to Australia, Gatton especially, uh, it's a very quiet town. It's very, very far from the main city, so it's about a two hour drive from the main city. So it's a very secluded town where everyone knows each other, it's small. Um, so living there was, was really an experience for me because it's my dream to, you know, uh, live on my own independently, cooking for myself um, and studying as well. So I do get homesick. So I did get homesick on, during my time, although it's short. Um, I do call back regularly to my friends and family. Sometimes I'll just ring my best friend up and like, hey, you know, uh, can we have dinner over um, Skype or something? You know, with the times now, um, Skype and all those video calls are available. So it's really great to still keep in contact with your family back home and your friends, uh, call them regularly and, you know, living life in Australia. I meet new friends as well, friends from all over the world, different walks of lives. I've met people from Africa, uh, Papua New Guinea, Australians. They all lovely people. And, uh, you know, my landlady was like a mother figure to me. And my housemates were lovely. They sometimes cook extra for me and, and give me some food. So I feel at home there as well, as much as I was in Singapore. Yeah, so um, I'm like Atika, honestly, <laughs> they were very similar. I was super excited about going overseas. So I was like, oh, I'm going to live a new life, you know, like, obviously, it's so cool. Uh, so I was really, really happy besides the fact that I had to leave my friends and family and my cat. Um, but also, like Atika, I'm really someone who likes to do stuff alone. I like living alone. I So being independent was quite easy for me. Because you, I was like, uh, yeah, don't tell your parents, but living overseas is very, really, very liberating. You can do whatever you want, like, and <laughs> with, within good reason, don't, don't end up in jail. But, um, uh, that's, and the thing is, because you have power over your own life, you still remain disciplined because you need to keep yourself alive and you need to feed yourself. And also because that school is very, very expensive. So, like, it will be at the back of your mind, like, I can't screw up. Like, my parents are paying for me. Like, I can't screw up. <laughs> or if you're on a scholarship, then you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm representing the country, so I can't mess up. Like, you can have good fun, but within good reason. <laughs> um, but, no, yeah, it's nice because I-, I was very homesick the first, in first year, so, like, 2019, because we hadn't really found any friends yet, so we were all just, like, feeding each other out. And then... When we it was when we were coming back because of COVID, 
we realized that like I found my group of friends and we were so sad that we were leaving each other because like we became our family. So they really become your family and they all become like my sisters now. So the flatmate that I'm living with, she's really like my sister. So we do everything together. We eat lunch together. We eat like, dinner together. We movie night every night together. Oh, that's um, so sweet. So, yeah, but, but like husband and wife, we're always joking when, when people ask, oh, are you guys living together? We're like, yeah, it's my husband, it's my wife. <laughs> yeah, so um, but so now like I'm stuck here because I can't go back because if I do, I might have to defer year three, but I'm totally fine. Like, you can live your best life here, honestly. There's so many nice things to see. Um, It's very different pace of life. Uh, from Singapore you can just you can literally wake up and be like okay I'm going to climb a mountain today and then the mountain is just like five minutes away but you have to it takes quite long to get up but like it's a five minute walk to the base of the mountain or you can go to like a lake to feed the swans and stuff like that so it's quite it's quite nice especially if you like being I mean you don't you won't really be alone because you'll have friends but if you like living independently then I think you should go for it you'll love it a lot yeah. But that being said, in Australia, shops close us at 5 p.m. So <laughs> you don't really have a nightlife there. But I mean, <laughs> wait, well, because of COVID, or is it like that usually? No, no, it's like <laughs> that usually. No. It's just Australia, yeah. <laughs> so shops close at 5 p.m. every single day. So I think it's earlier during the weekend. So do your groceries and all that. So you don't really have a nightlife. I think it's a bit different from UK in terms of entertainment. But can you can just like buy a couple of drinks and like hang out at a friend's house? That's yeah. really nice. Definitely, that's why. That's what, that's what we always do. Like we go to a friend's house and we play Nintendo Switch until like seven a.m. the next day, and then like and then study. <laughs> and then we just walk home and then sleep. <laughs> that's during summer though. During the semester, you have no time for that. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that sums up a uh, lot more of our general questions. So now, um, the current students, they have some uh, specific questions for UQ and RDSVS. So uh, we'll start with Atika. So um, somebody asked, has getting a vet tech degree improved your career opportunities compared to just a vet tech diploma? So in comparison with like, diploma grad, um, you're given bigger roles and responsibility as well as you undertake a more senior role in your job. So you definitely rank up higher in the field as compared to your peers who only have a vet tech diploma. So you can also explore more opportunities with like local hospitals, laboratories and all that stuff. So currently I'm now a head vet tech after five years of working and then I hope to like, you know, uh, <laughs> in a couple of years, um, take a different, a higher role than what I'm doing now. So it really doesn't stop at just being a vet tech. When you have a degree, you can explore bigger roles, bigger responsibilities, things that you actually don't expect um, having a diploma, uh, you know, that you can go that far with just a diploma. So as part as of my clinic's hiring committee, I also realized that I tend to look more on like students with uh, a vet tech degree or someone who holds a, a, a uni degree because I feel that these students they hold more um, a better skill set better knowledge they're, they're more strong in in that sense where they they are more exposed to all these uh, experiences and so I definitely would look into uni grads than fresh grads uh, from Turkey but that being said I, I'm not saying that I won't I won't take diploma students I, I really do uh, take vet techs if um, they're really genuine about the job and uh, they love what they do, like how I took Adriana in to my team. And I think, yeah, it's just that in, improve in that sense, you'll get a, a higher rank in the field, I guess. <laughs> so uh, that's actually all the questions we have for UQ. <laughs> so now we move on to Adriana. <laughs> Uh, so the first question is, what is the culture like in RDSBS? Um, it's quite competitive. Like the kids that come, that go there, like not even the Asian kids. Like you'd be surprised. We were also surprised that like the the Caucasian people were so on. Like in the first week, they were like, "Oh, I memorized the whole skeleton already," and then my friends and I are like, 
what's the ocular muscle like here? I don't know anything. And we're like, are we supposed to know that already? Yeah, it's very, very competitive. And um, because they're all like the top 1% of their schools, that's why they got chosen. They came here. Um, and from what I've heard from Glasgow is that, because I have friends in Glasgow as well, they say that Glasgow is so much more chill. But um, also the lecturers in Edinburgh are a lot better. I, th- I think, I feel, maybe I'm biased, but my friends always complain about the Glasgow lecturers and say that like they, are, they don't really care about their um, school, uh, their students and stuff, they just give them material. But for my lecturers, they're really dedicated to their work. And um, But then again, being competitive is good, I guess, because it keeps you on your toes. Uh, so people here work hard and they play hard and it's very, very different from the culture in Singapore. But literally, they can do like a full day of school, so like nine to five with like two, three hour practicals. And then at night, they're like out clubbing. And the next day, they come in sunglasses, with their coffee cup, and then they're at lecture at 9 a.m. And then they still do so well in school. <laughs> so you're just like kind of questioning yourself. Like, I, didn't, I don't go out that much. <laughs> why Why can't I do as well then? But yeah, it's different. It's very, very different culture. Yeah. Was there any reason why you chose a DSPS over other universities? Like, <clears throat> or like why you chose UK over Australia or the US? Um, yeah, so uh, to be honest, very, very honest. I know this is going on YouTube, but it's okay. I'm proud of it. Um, I wanted to go to Glasgow. <laughs> But my parents forced me to go to Edinburgh because I got accepted into Edinburgh. <laughs> and also, like, they were trying to convince me. They were saying, they're like, oh, yeah, um, Edinburgh is the one that cloned Dolly the sheep. And <laughs> the city is a lot safer, which is true. Edinburgh is a lot safer than Glasgow because Glasgow is a bit, it's like, more of a rougher part of Scotland. And But the people there are still very nice. Everyone here is really very nice. And also because I chose Edinburgh, well, my parents chose Edinburgh, because the interviewers at the RDSVS interview session were a lot nicer, a lot more approachable compared to um, the ones that came for the Glasgow info session. So they really liked them a lot better. And um, I didn't choose Australia because the good Australian unis, which were Sydney and Melbourne, was a six to seven year course. And year one, you need to take like chemistry and physics and all that. And I was just like, um, I do not have the brain cell for this. And US schools only have eight years, only have the eight year course, which gives you the doctor of vet med or DVM. But that's because you have to do a thesis. So for your five year course, you don't have to do a thesis. And so that left with the five year course choice, the choice of five years, which was the most ideal. Because you get to do it in five years, you know, you don't you don't waste that two years. And I didn't choose Murdoch because my parents didn't really like the facilities. And I don't know, it's like, you know, how I said I wanted to be independent and stuff. Like Australia is so near home, and I just wanted to be like in a faraway land, like it's totally new, where the air we don't share the same air and all that stuff. And um, and also because in Murdoch in Australia the fees would have come up to more expensive than UK after converting the pounds back to Singapore dollars because um, they have fee increments every year. So the last year it will be about 90k. But in Edinburgh, it's like the 35,000 every year for that. For my whole five years, there's no fee increment. And the UK has better accreditation than Murdoch. So more expensive, lesser accreditation. But nearer to home, not really worth it, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so more accreditations will allow you to apply to more places for work, you know, because you never know where life is going to take you. Yeah. So you're in your third year of vet school now, right? So mm. you have two more years until you graduate and become a vet. <laughs> Yeah, don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's actually most of the questions, and uh, I have one last question for you. Somebody asked, "Do you think taking a gap year will be beneficial?" So maybe Atika you can talk about this since you kind of took a gap year, I guess, working at Mount Pleasant. 
Yeah, uh, so yes, my answer is yes, take a gap year. Um, but when I say gap year, I mean not you sitting at home for a whole year and not do anything. That's not a gap year. I think the very common misconception is that taking a gap year would mean you forget everything that you learn in poly and then go straight to uni, which is not true. So when I'm saying gap year, actually take the chance to find a job, which may be a volunteer job, part-time or full-time at a clinical setting, you know, uh, gives you a chance to actually experience what it's like to work in a veterinary field, like the stressful work setting, how you interact with people, interact with clients, um, interact with the animals even. And so it makes you think of whether this path, this vet tech or vet school is actually what you want to do in, in many years to come. And not only that, you can also, you know, earn extra savings from working in that short stint. So at least you have some savings for yourself when you want to like, you know, just splurge on something nice overseas because that's what I did when I was bored. I just bought a PS4. And then, uh, yeah, so it's part of the savings that I did during my gap year as well. So I think it's great to go for a gap year um, before starting uni. But that being said, you must at least do some volunteer work or full-time job during that time. Because if you're going to stay at home during your gap year, you might as well just take your uni immediately, you know. Yeah. So uh, that was the last question for today that they, uh, that they submitted through Google Forms. So now we're going, since we have some time left, we're going to open the floor to any questions that you have, like the current students have watching this. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can just type them in the chat or you can just unmute and ask them directly. Oh, we have, oh, we have a few. Oh, so one from Mr. Alden. <laughs> oh, we already, we already answered that, right? Do you have to take an English proficiency yeah. test? Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> so, uh, Randall asked, what were some bad experiences overseas? Oh. Bad experiences? Like, in terms of study? Or, I guess... In terms of studying, I'll, I'll go through some of the bad experiences. I lived in a very, <laughs> many. I don't know, <laughs> not many actually, but bad experiences. I live in a very outskirts, like at the outskirts of Gatton. So that area has a lot of um, like druggies and people who like, I don't know, druggies, drunks and all that in the middle of the night. So sometimes it's quite scary to go home from uni um, but that's just the place where I live like in terms of study bad experiences uh, not really the people there are actually very lovely if you don't count all these bad people living around Gatton <laughs> they're, they're really lovely it's because it's a small town everyone knows each other so I don't really have any bad experiences I don't know about Andrea but I really love my experience there <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just experiences you can ignore, honestly, because it's just because I'm Asian and they've just never seen an Asian girl in their life as well because they've gone to like London prep school and all of them. It's like all preppy British, rich British girls. So um, I tried being friends with everyone in year one, but like I was not treated very well. So I was like, I forget it, I'm too tired for this. So I just hung out with my friends like my Malaysian, Singapore and Hong Kong friends because it's culturally easier as well because the culture is very, very different. But, you know, just don't go out late um, alone because um, it's, I mean, it's not as safe as Singapore, like to be honest. Don't be scared. Don't, don't not come because you're scared of getting like stabbed or, or kidnapped and, or, or like bashed because um, it can be avoided. It's just, yeah, it happens. But, yeah. It'll be just, fine. just know how to protect yourself. Huh? Mm, yeah, no, just run. <laughs> run fast. Yeah, <laughs> run. No, just, I mean, we're so comfortable like living in Singapore, being safe, that we yeah. tend to forget that we're in someone else's country. The people there are not as nice as Singaporeans. And as I said, in the middle of the night, anyone could just pounce on you and grab the stuff yeah. it's different but it's really they are different. very nice they're very very nice right. people here i've yep. met 
like the nice people are way nicer than the people in Singapore. <laughs> That's right. But the the rough people are quite scary. Yeah. I've never personally experienced yeah. racism there, but um, yeah, so just just be aware that it can happen. It exists. It exists. It exists. It exists because yeah. correct. You don't think it can happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we actually have quite a few questions. Oh, also. So, so we'll try to wow. speed things up. Hey. So Ping Han asked, how do you do in poly? Oh, <laughs> bad. <laughs> I didn't do as well as Andrena. <laughs> I was just an average student. I just passed my subjects. I, I really didn't do well. Okay, to be honest, my GPA was only 2.6. So I wasn't eligible for the local unis and that was probably one of the reasons I went to UQ. So I, I really didn't do well in my poly, but I really worked hard in uni to make sure that I really aced all my subjects. Um, but in poly, I didn't really do well, but I studied really hard after. What about you, Andriana? <laughs> You are sure your GPA. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Am I supposed to shamelessly expose my GPA now? <laughs> I got above three. The best one. Because <laughs> that is the requirement. <laughs> um, consider it for UK uni. <laughs> um, but yeah, I worked. I worked really, 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 really very hard. Um, it was. It was a bit crazy. In year one, I didn't actually have a social life because I was so obsessed with my GPA. But I mean, paid off. Then in year two and three, I could, have, I could like a bit, you know. <laughs> it was fine. But yeah, um, I mean, don't worry. Just make sure you keep your GPA above three point five and do more work experiences. You'll be fine. Yeah, work experience yeah. is very important, especially if you're not yeah too it's well. With the this. practical. I, honestly, I think the school accepted me because I was I had a lot of work experience. It's not really because of my grade. So, uh, Chloe asks, are there any tips for building portfolio? Okay. Maybe oh, besides yeah. like uh, having work experience or like getting testimonials. I didn't really have to work on a portfolio. <laughs> but yeah, I guess Andrea for your interview, I guess. Um, uh yeah so <clears throat> um my portfolio what did it consist of um I had my CV so my resume of everything that I've done animal related you don't have to put in that you work at like Yankee Candle because yeah you, they don't really care about that um <laughs> um do more there's like volunteer stuff so do more volunteer so I did TP had like a rabies vaccination volunteer since when I was in school. That was really cool. So we went on like the K-Longs and stuff. Is it the, the one where you have to take like, or you have to like take the uh, jetty to somewhere else? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah we yeah, have yeah. that this year also, but then it got cancelled because of COVID. Oh. Hi. <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So um, maybe not <laughs> social events. Uh, okay, so uh, go work in the clinic. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I know earning money is important, but sometimes doing something to not, uh, not for the money, it will benefit you in the long run. Like, um, a lot of people were saying why I'm crazy for doing my six-month internship at a clinic that wasn't going to pay me because everyone was getting paid per month. Some people were getting paid quite high as well. But at the end of it, I gained, I did a lot more than all of the people that were paid did. And I had a lot more to say during my uh, interview and my, like for my work experiences. And also, um, if you like like going to dog shelters and like SPCA and stuff, you should do like um, volunteer, volunteering because it will help with your portfolio it's just like they just want to see how exposed you are to the animal industry also and um how you kind of integrate your personal life with your work life because here they're all about like professional work-life balance because they don't think that someone like you could have like a 4.0 gpa but if you're not someone that 
they like their character doesn't suit their school because I really really think they look at character when they pick people so you can have the best record but if they speak to you and they don't like the words that's coming out of your mouth then <laughs> they probably won't pick you they'll pick someone else yeah um Eugene asked do UK universities offer like a pre-vet year like how some Australian universities offer or is there like an opportunity to jump straight into a veterinary, veterinary medicine from another science degree? Um, you can just jump in, but like you can apply, but you you would have to have a very strong work experience portfolio because um, you don't really have the diploma to show it. Uh, I think it's possible, honestly, because you did sign. And you know how A-level students, they don't really have a diploma like in vet tech or like anything related to vet medicine. And they still can get in. It's just that they have to work really hard at their portfolio. So I think it's possible. Um, we don't... UK does not do what Matthew does where we make the like the Hunger Games you guys in year one and make you guys like fight for a spot or vet med the next year. No, it's like UK schools, if they want you, they'll take you in and you're a vet med student for the rest of the five years. Yeah, you don't have to worry about doing animal science. <laughs> yeah. Also to jump in for UQ, if you actually complete your final year of vet tech, you're actually exempted for one year of your vet school. So after, upon completion of your degree in vet tech, um, they will offer you two paths. Either you take the honours degree or you actually get a one year exemption from the five year course. So if you want to consider oh, that. Yeah, that's true. So in UK, yeah, it's called GEP. So general, mm. graduate, not general, oh my gosh. Graduate entry program. So basically, if you have a degree already, you can skip year one of that school. Mm. So uh, Pearly asked, uh, was family support part of your worries? So I guess like, like how, how your family uh, could support you from overseas? since they're not physically there with me. I guess from the beginning, my family has always been very supportive of what I'm doing <clears throat> um, in terms of monetary or just physical support. I mean, I mean, they're not physically there, but emotional support, they're always there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I wasn't worried because I know that if I were to call home at any time of uh, the day, like, because we had a two hour difference in time I know Edinburgh is a different time frame altogether but yeah I know if I could, I did call home even at like 5 a.m Australian time someone would pick up even if it's a friend or family um, they'll pick up and you know check up on me so <coughs> I wasn't too worried per se about um, being alone there and not having any family <laughs> again I, I enjoy being alone so <laughs> Yeah, and um, no, my parents are also very supportive of me going overseas to study. Like, my dad was saying, like, no, you should go, go, like, you have the grades, you go, you got accepted, um, we'll, we'll pay, you don't have to worry. The only thing you have to do is study hard, make sure you get your degree, become, like, what you want to become. That's the only repayment. <laughs> thank you, mom, thank you, dad. <laughs> That's the only repayment we need from you is to be a good student. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm blessed. I mean, I mean, if um, money is a worry, do talk up with your parents, like, you know, to discuss on how to pay the yeah. bills and all that. I mean, it's great to have a talk with them. Yeah. Uh, so, April asks, can Adina and Andriana share with us where can you practice after you graduate from UK, USA, Australia? So, like, for... I mean, it, for me, it's just a vet tech degree, so you can actually practice anywhere. I mean, uh, it's recognized in Singapore, it's recognized in Australia. I, mean, I guess if you want to use your degree in Australia, it's a bit different. You need to be accredited, so you need to join the Nurses Association there. Similar for US, I'm not sure about UK, but um, certain countries do require for you to be actually accredited before you can practice as a professional vet tech. <coughs> 
But in Singapore, it's not necessary. You can join the SBA, which is Singapore Veterinary Association, but uh, it's not necessary. Um, Andrew. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so for if you get a U, if you get a UK degree, uh, yeah, accreditation, you can work in Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, um, South Africa, um, and if you take the NAVLE, which is the North American Licensing Exam you can practice in um, South America, but we are AVMA accredited, so anywhere that is not South America, you can practice as well. Um, for Australia, I think um, you don't have the South American um, accreditation. And then, um, yeah, you have to check on that one because the accreditation changes every year. But, Can I butt yeah. in? <laughs> it's Dr. Lou here. I should turn oh, on hi. my camera. Hi. Oh. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, I, yeah, so, so Andrea is almost right. Um, so for US, US schools would be, you need to be AVMA accredited for them to be able to sit NAVLE, uh, which is the licensing examination for the US. Uh, then depending on what state you want to practice in, there's actually some states do have um, Show exams now that you have to sit. Uh, for Australia, as far as I'm concerned, the main four universities, so Melbourne, Queensland, Sydney, and Murdoch, are all AVMA accredited as well, so they can do the NAFLE too. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for the vet techs, um, Atika is right as well. Uh, for the US, in order to become a certified vet tech, you have to be, it's also AVMA accreditation. Uh, which allows then the vet tech to sit for a certification examination um, to become a you get the title now of certified vet tech um, for uk um, similar kind of similar kind of thing but it's more to do with which college you attend have to become from an accredited college and then australia Atika knows best <laughs> uh, also i'm going to put in the chat now shameless plug uh, all for you to consider joining the singapore vet nurses and technicians chapter facebook page thank you <laughs> Okay, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. <Lo. laughs> so, um, Ava asked, how did you go about using an agent for the application process? So, I think it's for Andriana. Um, and I think it's, uh, you can, do you, you want to, like, message me after uh, the session? Um, but if not, I mean, I can tell you a bit. It's just that, like, I found this, very good agent and like I've been recommending her to all of my friends who wanted to go overseas to study and she's helped a lot and she just she's a fantastic agent and um she just makes you feel like you're her only client even though she has like probably 10 other clients but yeah um you can message me I'll leave my uh Instagram or Facebook on or even my number I, I can pass it to Tina and then whoever wants to ask me more questions because I, I think we might be running out of time yeah, yeah I don't mind yeah I don't wish yeah. so uh, we that's all the time we have for today <laughs> so I'm sorry to Hayden <laughs> we didn't get to answer your question but hopefully <laughs> we've hopefully we've answered most of your questions and like have eased your doubts about overseas university so before we end the call um, Adriana and Epica do you want to share like some like a one sentence advice to those that are looking to go overseas i guess the most important part of it is do your research and make sure this is really what you want to do because i think at this point of time when you're in year three of pp you're really not sure is this the right path is this what i want because at the end of the day you know you're gonna work in this field for quite some time so Really think about it, sit down, talk to your parents, talk to your family, friends, yeah. everyone, you know, just get an idea of what you actually want. We're here too, if you want to find us in our social accounts, we'll probably we'll help you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, don't be shy, just uh, hit us up. <laughs> and, yeah, um, my advice is that um, getting into vet school is harder than vet school itself. So, um, don't don't worry 
um, I think the fact that you get like what Atika said, just be sure that vet school is what you want to do because or vet tech school because I'm it's not easy at all. Like you really need like the there are a few times I was just like in bed having to wake up for 9am lecture and I'm just like is this really worth it? And I'm like yes it is so you know you need to have the drive and make sure that this is really really what you want. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here today and being our speakers. So for um for um anybody that wants to ask Atika or Andriana questions maybe we PWC can uh, shout your Instagram pages. So you can just head on to the TPVWC Instagram page to uh, DM them on if, if you have any questions you have. So, thank you. That's all the time we have for today. <laughs> Alright, thank you everyone. I mean, like, I'm, thank you. I'm, I mean, I'm free. I can just hang back for the questions if they really. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I have nothing to do for now. <laughs> well, uh, since, since you want to head back, do you want to answer Hayden's question then? Yeah, for Hayden. Sure, uh, sure Hayden. <laughs> sure, so Hayden. Hayden uh, how did you guys pay for the overseas school fees? Parents. Uh, <laughs> no, I also got um, a grant um, from my... Mudaki. Yeah, but mostly parents. My parents are paying. Um, I try and on, like so. I get my parents to pay like the stuff that needs to be paid for. I mean, like tuition fees and um, like uh, food, food tuition fees, accommodation. So like things that we they would usually pay if you were in Singapore. So and then I try and earn like a bit of pocket money my on my own if I want to go on like a trip with my friends or for my EMS placement. That's kind of like extra, yeah. He also asked what's the difference between universities in different countries. But I think we covered that. <laughs> like it goes from like fees to number of years, modules, I think. It really um. works. I think Hayden, what you need to do is um you should make like a Google spreadsheet <laughs> of all the unis you are considering and then for all the years, the fees and then location and then um yeah. Uh, then you can see and compare easily because that's what I did. And also accreditation, accreditation is important. <laughs> yeah. Oh that, that, um, I, also I if you're worried realize. about I just, oh sorry, I just realized that yeah. that school there's only in UQ, okay. the messy one is temporarily closed at the moment. So oh. I guess, yeah, you just, if you're considering that tech, there's only that one you need for now. Mm. Yeah, yeah for Adriana, the few. I forgot, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Lowe said that Adelaide University has a vet tech degree too. So maybe you can consider okay. that for anybody who wants to be a vet tech and have a degree. Mm. But just look at the curriculum, I guess. Um, the one that yeah. fits you best is the most important because if you go to a uni that you don't like, like the experience or time, then you probably do not want to wake up at 9 a.m. for a lecture if that happens. <laughs> yeah, choose one that you love. Andriana, yeah. uh, since you... Since uh, we're still here, do you want to talk about like your experience with agents? Oh yeah, okay. Um, okay. Shamelessly promoting my agent. So she's from the right you. I give you her number. Uh, if you message me, and she's she's really fantastic. Um, she will help you from applying your visa to finding accommodation here, and she liaises with the school as well. Um, she makes. Sure, you hit all you hit all the deadlines, and um, it's just there all the time. Like you can message her anytime. Like you're panicking, and she'll give you a very clear answer, and you're like, okay, I don't need to panic anymore. And um, and you don't have to pay for her services because when you she will she will make sure she you get into a school. Like she she's amazing. Like she'll make sure you get into a school, 
and then she will um uh she'll get commission from the school that way. Oh, also forgot to mention. I think this is quite important. In UK school for UCAS, you need to write a personal statement. I forgot. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, um, the agent will help you with that as well. She'll give you some, um, like, examples, and then you have to write a personal statement. Yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, Ava, you can DM Andriana on her yeah. Instagram. There she is. There she'll pass you her agent's number. Yes, I will. Okay, so... Uh, I guess that wraps up our AMA for today. Unfortunately, uh, we have to end the session now. Yeah. Sure. So thank you everyone for coming. Thanks for having us. Yep. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks Bye. for thanks for coming. Yeah. Bye. Bye.